This is KGW News at Sunrise. Hey, good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, the election results for Washington's third congressional district are in. Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez has been declared the winner. What that means on a national stage coming up. And local kids making a big difference. How students are learning about diversity and growing a healthier world. But first, Let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a quick look at the forecast. Good morning. Good morning. Foggy and freezing fog out there. Yeah. Also part of the weather story this morning. Let's get to the weather wall because I want to show you some of the advisories that are out there right now. The uh, teal shading that you see is a freezing fog advisory for the central Willamette Valley. That includes a, a chunk of Clackamas County, Marion County, Yamhill and Polk County. And then to the south of that, a dense fog advisory. Both of those in effect until 11 a.m. And even here in town, we can see a little bit of fog here starting to form in downtown Portland. It's 31 degrees, by the way, at PDX. So this is one of those mornings where if you see fog, it's probably a safe assumption that there may be some slick spots on the roads with temperatures at or below freezing. It's 28 right now in Hillsborough. Tiger sits at 29, a smidge warmer, but not much in the Willamette Valley, 34 in Salem, 33 in Kaiser. And uh, again, the visibility is starting to drop just a little bit. Hillsborough down to a half a mile. McMinnville, Salem, Corvallis down to a quarter mile and less in Eugene with the visibility in the fog. It is not a slam dunk that the fog and the clouds are going to clear today. The best chance for that to happen will be here in the Portland Vancouver metro area, but not a slam dunk. I do think we do see some late day sun with temperatures in the upper 40s. Your full forecast comes up in just a few minutes. Tim. OK, Chris, we'll see you then. Well, breaking news this morning, a man is dead after an early morning shooting in the Hazelwood neighborhood. Around 1.30 this morning, police responded to reports that someone was shot near Southeast 122nd Avenue and Ash Street. Officers found the victim. He was sent to the hospital where he later died. No arrests have been made. Police are now rele not releasing information on any suspects at this point. While they investigate, Southeast Ash will remain closed between 119th and 122nd Avenues. Now also this morning we have information on a shooting incident in Salem just before seven last night. We can tell you there was an exchange of gunfire between a Salem police officer and three suspects, but no injuries are being reported. Uh, there's video from the scene of uh, the shooting in the top right of your screen. Uh, according to police around 630, a woman reported two men trying to rob her car near Northeast 117th and Southeast Hines Street. While responding to that call, officers found another car that had been reported stolen around Northeast 18th and Center Street. Now, police tried to stop that car and say the driver drove off. A lone officer chased, chased them. Eventually, three people got out and ran. Then police say the officer and suspects exchanged fire at Northeast 14th Street and B, right next to North Salem High School. Two men were arrested, but the third was never found. State police will investigate the use of force and the officer involved is on administrative leave. And staying in Salem, all northbound lanes of I-5 are closed because of what appears to be a fatal crash. Well, this happened around 1.30 this morning. Our photographer on the scene said a minivan appeared to have rolled, but it's unclear exactly what happened. A five-mile stretch of I-5 is closed just north of the intersection with Highway 22. That's south of Portland Road exit use Portland Road as a detour. There is a freezing fog advisory in this area, so it's been issued for the entire central Willamette Valley by the National Weather Service. All right, let's talk politics now. Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez is heading to Washington, D.C. this morning. She'll take part in new member orientation after being declared the winner of Washington's third congressional district race. Vote totals in Clark County released late Saturday afternoon were just enough to push Gluson Camp Perez to victory. Art Edwards has been following the race for us. Supporters of Democrat Marie Gluson Camp Perez gathered at Lewitt Brewing Company in Vancouver to celebrate. New vote counts from Clark and other counties in the district Saturday afternoon showed her holding off Republican Joe Kent, celebrating shortly after both the Associated Press and NBC News called the race for Washington's third congressional district in her favor. You work and you work and you work and you don't know if it's going to come to pay out and, and I'm so grateful, I'm so humbled and I'm so honored to have had the support that made this race possible. 
Glusenkamp Perez, who is an auto shop owner and Skamania County resident, led Kent by just over 4,600 votes by the end of Saturday. Though her lead has been narrowing since election night, it does not appear that Kent will have enough votes in the remaining ballots to overtake her. There are still about 5,000 ballots to be counted in Clark County and ballots in other counties as well. I think that we have sent a clear message that, you know, working families in southwest Washington, we are tired of clickbait politics. We are tired of extremism. We want people who work for a living who understand the difficulties facing families like mine. Kent made it to the general election after pushing past incumbent Jamie Herrera Butler in the primary. While Herrera Butler had voted to impeach former President Trump, Kent was endorsed by him. Kent has not conceded, and on Twitter, he said, what the media says is irrelevant. It's another narrative designed to stop voters from ballot curing and to force me to concede. Not going to happen. He has said previously that he will accept the results of the election. Art Edwards, KGW News. And to clarify, ballot curing happens when ballots are rejected over signature issues. Those ballots can still be counted, but the voter needs to get it fixed. First. All right, there's one congressional race still undecided in Oregon. The new 6th district comes down to a battle between Democrat Andres, uh, Andrew Salinas and Republican Mike Erickson. The latest numbers from Clackamas County came in late last night. And based on the latest count, Salinas is still holding just under 50 percent of the vote to Erickson's nearly 47 percent. And looking now at the control of the Senate in Washington, D.C., Democrats will keep control in this chamber with 50 seats. Republicans have 49. The count became official after results from Nevada's election came in Saturday night. S uh, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto will hold on to her seat. In the House, Republicans will likely win the majority. NBC News is projecting Democrats win 216 seats and expects the GOP to win 219. Pretty close there. Right now, we're still waiting on Georgia, whose Senate contest is headed to a December runoff. Well, inflation has everyone trying to save pennies, even grocery stores. Companies are now replacing high-priced ingredients in your favorite foods to save money. NBC Savannah Sellers has details on how to spot the changes and what you can do about it. There may be a surprise waiting for you at the grocery store. Some companies are substituting ingredients in their products, often with cheaper ones. It's called skimpflation, and it's stopping shoppers in their tracks. Yeah, it seems, it seems unfair. It's so hard to stay up to date on exactly what's going into your food. An anonymous survey of 300 large food and beverage brands showed that nearly two-thirds of them reformulated at least six recipes, 90% of them citing higher ingredient prices. Often water can be added, and we also see basically a shifting to what are less expensive ingredients, from sugar to high fructose corn syrup. Take a look at these two packages of Smart Balance Margarine. Look at the front. They look identical, same weight. Oh, I see it in very fine print. In the bottom left-hand corner, this one says it's 64% vegetable oil. This one says it's 39% vegetable oil. And it's leaving customers with a poor taste in their mouths. Some writing how to destroy a great product. New formula is not an improvement and just simply gross. TV dinner favorites, Hungry Man's Double Chicken Bowls, also getting a redo. The old package said 39 grams of protein. The new package says 33 grams of protein. That's a 15% reduction. But spotting the changes can be challenging. Is there less chicken in it? Is there less cheese in it? Hungry Man's parent company, Conagra, has not responded to NBC's request for comment. Some companies are doing away with ingredients altogether. In 2018, Whole Foods Organic Honey and Nut Morning O's contained real organic almonds. Now, they've completely eliminated them from the cereal product. Whole Foods telling NBC News they reformulate their products for a number of reasons, from new suppliers to availability to feedback on taste or texture. Less than 10% of people actually read ingredient labels, but experts say it's time to take things into your own hands. You could certainly try to contact the company themselves, and certainly if you let them know that a change was made that they're unhappy with, they take it very seriously. Case in point, the butter spread backlash. 
Smart Balance's parent company, ConAgra, is now reversing course, telling NBC News, We made changes to some Smart Balance products to make them easier to spread. We have heard the feedback from consumers and have decided to return to the previous recipes in the coming months. Because there's only one recipe in business, keeping the customer happy. Savannah Sellers, NBC News, Somerville, Massachusetts. Uh, interesting stuff there. Well, if you've ever stood in the forest and looked up at the trees, you, you know it all starts from the ground up. This week, John Goodwin met up with some fifth graders in North Portland doing some planting at Pier Park. They're learning how even the big things in nature must start small. If you look at a healthy forest, it will have many layers. Pier Park is an oasis of green in the middle of North Portland's St. John's neighborhood. If you look around, you'll see it's a bunch of tall trees. The canopy, strong. It's the understory in need of some TLC. Stephanie LaMonica is with the all-volunteer nonprofit Friends of Pier Park with a mission of park restoration and community engagement. <laughs> Let's say that together. To help the environment. And this is one way to get our kids interested in, in the environment. It's, it's a quiet little way to uh, show them how they can make a difference and be connected to the environment outside their doors. Okay, are we ready? <laughs> All right. The newest and youngest environmental stewards were 26 fifth graders from nearby Sitton Elementary. Friends of Pier Park is very happy that you're here today to help care for our park, which is right next to your school. 100 plants, mostly ferns, went into the ground. Keontae Brogdon, one of the students, to move a little earth. It's clear what he likes about it. Planting and getting dirty. <laughs> we're planting native plants and the plants that were here way before we lived here. The kids in their lessons have been learning about the Nez Perce tribe and the importance of native plants. So today it's going to be even more special for them that they will put their learning in action, see the plants up close that they have been learning about, and put some into the ground to grow. The native plants will make Pier Park more biodiverse, improve the watershed, and help wildlife, big and small. I got a worm. This is controlled mayhem. This is what it is. Yeah. We put together this program to work with our local school and get the kids out in nature, fresh air, have fun, be a kid. And they get to watch their investments grow, literally, one plant at a time. 26 new friends of Pier Park giving this healthy forest one more layer. The beauty of it is they don't know they're learning. This is what makes it so wonderful. In St. John's, John Goodwin, KGW News. Just put a little little ID tag next to each plant. Well, they know where they planted their plant. Right. And they yeah. can go back and check on it now six that months friends. a year. And, yeah. yeah. For it's friends. Great to see. And, and then the native plants getting in there is just so important. And kids love dirt. They do love dirt. I love that shot. That <laughs> My five-year-old's now coming in with like bugs and worms. Yeah. And, and worms, like, yeah. The they're worms. nice. They're nice to greet. It's just, let's <laughs> keep them out where they belong yep, in their home. Please, yeah. Leave them out back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Multnomah County is discouraging people from putting natural gas stoves in their homes. Coming up next, we break down the new report supporting their suggestion, plus the arguments against it.